Dr. Marcy from Behavior and Beyond, where I bring you realistic ideas for the real life behavior you face. Today, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about anxiety. More and more, I'm talking to families and teachers who are talking about the anxiety that their small beings are facing. And it's a really tough situation to know what to do. Now, the exciting news about this is that there's a lot to do behaviorally to combat anxiety. So I'm gonna give you my top three tips for you. First, if you find that your small being is having a lot of anxiety around something, oftentimes we wanna talk about it, let them voice all of their concerns. Behaviorally, I would suggest talking to them for two to three minutes, let them voice their concerns, say what's going on, be sympathetic, be empathetic, let them know that you understand without feeding the anxiety. So saying things like, that sounds hard, or I hear you, or is there anything else you wanna share? And then after a few minutes, say, finding a gentle way to change the conversation. You wanna move on. Anxiety is about thoughts that are really, I don't wanna say scary, but that are causing anxiety. It's a fear of what is to come or what happened in the past or a fear of the unknown. And when you just sit talking and staying in those fears, there's nowhere to go except to have even more anxiety and we don't want that. So let your small being voice their concerns and then move on. Talk to them about something else that will distract them. It will help them understand that there is a place for them to problem solve and discuss their problems. And then it will also teach them how to change gears and get into something more productive. My second tip for you is to get them moving. One of the best ways to combat anxiety is to actually start moving our body. When we're just sitting and talking, we can stay in that same place forever. But if you move your body, you get your heart rate going, you get something that they're excited about. Personally, you may have heard me talk about it before, it's a dance party. Anytime I get stuck in one thought that's going through my head again and again and again, I'm getting worried about it, I stop, put on some music, have a dance party, and I feel much better in no time. Find a thing that's gonna work for you and your family or your students, but there's always a way to do it. Whether it's getting outside and running around the block or doing some push-ups, or some jumping jacks or a dance party, find a way to get your body moving to get out of that anxiety provoking place and into a much happier space. My third tip for you is if you are around a small being who tends to have anxiety, be careful of the way you are talking and framing situations that might be hard for them. With our best intentions, we always tend to talk about what's to come and get them prepared. But what I found is that sometimes when we're doing that, we tend to point out all of the things that are gonna be hard and simply say they're not gonna be there. Oh, don't worry, that boy that you don't like won't be there. Oh, don't worry, this won't be like last time. Oh, don't worry, you know, insert fear here, right? All of the things that they are scared of, you start talking about in order to say, don't, it's not gonna be there this time. What happens with that is that it just creates more anxiety. Instead, try framing what's gonna come in a way of all positive and exciting things that will calm them. Oh, this time your best friend's gonna be at that party, it's gonna be so fun. Or this time I found out that the structure is, you know, first we're gonna go to the playground, then we're gonna have a snack, and then we're gonna go to our friend's house for a play date, so we know what's happening. The more that you can tell them about what's going to happen in a positive light, in good terms, that is gonna make it successful and you can stay positive, the easier it will be for your small being to stay positive as well. I hope these few tips, that you take them and put them into place because that's where the magic really happens. Because small steps lead to big behavioral changes and if you wanna change the anxiety in your, the small beings around you, you gotta take some small steps to get there. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. And if you want more behavioral tips, head over to my website, www.behaviorandbeyond.net. Sign up for my mailing list. I send out weekly tidbits of behavioral advice that I think you're gonna find to be amazing. I certainly do. And don't forget to subscribe below. Blue skies are ahead. Let's get there together.